Welcome to Patents TV Featured Solutions. I'm David Jackson with the Patents Project. Today, I'm introducing Joni Degner, Customer Account Manager from Text Help for Education and Don Johnston Sales. She has important updates to share with you about Read and Write. So I am very excited to be here with you and talking with um, our viewers about Read and Write and specifically how to advance literacy and learning with Read and Write. Um, we know that over the last few years um, that their you know, learning and, and literacy certainly have not um, been you know, business as usual, but it's really, really important, I think, for us to make sure that we're able to move any of our learners out of remediation in terms of literacy and learning and really figure out how do we move them into advancement and Read and Write is a really robust literacy tool that can help every learner do that. So one of the things that I, I um, always kind of start by, <laughs> by telling people about Read and Write is that in addition to all of the fantastic supports for learning and literacy, which we're going to get into, I always like to start by telling people that you know, Read and Write doesn't ask you to change everything that you're doing and using in the classroom. So it actually can enhance and continue to add value to some of the technology and the solutions and the, the curricular platforms that you've already spent money on. And so if you're looking at the screen or you're not able to see the screen, um, what we've got here is um, a, an, a, an image that is full of lots of different graphics and logos from various curricular platforms and learning management systems. So things like Schoology, um, Canvas, Google Classroom, but also curricular platforms like Discovery Education, HMH, um, Alex, uh, if you use that for math, Achieve 3000. Um, and so one of the things that's important to know is that Read and Write as a literacy solution actually can kind of slide in on top of all of these curricular platforms and learning management systems to provide seamless integration, but also robust support so that we're seeing um, you know, achievement and um, advancement for every student on every assignment and every environment that they work in. Also important to know that at Tech Help, we understand the importance of student privacy and security and the privacy and security of your data. Um, so all of our tools are GDPR compliant um, and we uh, take your data privacy very seriously. In terms of readers and, uh, and learners who are supported by Read and Write, we know that, that all students can benefit from Read and Write, but we also know that there are lots of students out there who have very specific needs. And so Read and Write also has the ability to cast a nice wide net for compliance in terms of special education support. And on the screen right now is an image uh, that came from the Office of Special Education Programs um, that suggests that 66.17% of school-age children in the year 2021 Served under IDEA Part B, received services inside a regular classroom for 80% or more of their day, which is really fantastic because that means that we have systems of education moving toward more inclusive learning environments. But in order for those learning environments to be truly inclusive, we have to make sure that those learners are not just being brought into those regular classrooms for 80% of their day, but that they're also being well supported. Um, and Read and Write is a, a, a literacy toolbar that can provide support for students with very specific needs and for students who don't have, um, you know, articulated needs either in an IEP, a 504, or an English language learner plan. So it really is one of these tools that can support inclusion without stigma, because we know that every learner struggles from time to time, it's not if, it's when. And so when we provide these supports for students with specific needs, we know that we can help support students um, in, in all of our classrooms and all of our learning environments. In addition to supporting students um, with IEPs and 504s, we also, I'm gonna show you a few of the very specific strategies you can use to support your students who um, might be English language learners. And on the screen now, I've also included um, an image of the eight components, the SIOP model. If you're not familiar with SIOP, 
the SIOP model is for sheltered instruction. It's a way of um, helping to increase um, academic proficiency and language proficiency for English language learners while keeping them with their peers in the general ed setting. In addition to um, providing uh, support to your learners with specific needs, we also know that read and write has the ability to increase growth and achievement on NWEA and state tests. Um, you can visit texthelp.com, that's T-E-X-T dot C-O-M, to learn more about the Plymouth Canton uh, efficacy study for read and write. On the screen, I've actually got a, a little snapshot of some of the data that was collected in that efficacy study that actually shows that the pool of third graders who had access to read and write um, improved their growth and achievement on the NWEA MAP test more than four times that of their peers at a control school of, of similar students who did not have access to read and write. It's a really fascinating study and speaks to the efficacy of, of the, the growth and achievement that learners can, um, can, can, can receive by using uh, tools like read and write on their daily assignments and their everyday tasks. And lastly, one of the reasons that Read and Write is so popular with more than 55 million student users is because it has a very simple user interface. So it's easy for young students to navigate, single click activation and deactivation. It's consistent in all environments. So whether learners are on a web page in a document, they're in slides and their learning management system, the support that they get from Read and Write is consistent and predictable. So I'm going to pop out of here and just get into a couple of um, places to just kind of show you some of these specific um, supports that are available through Read and Write. And so you should be able to see now a web page from the Smithsonian Magazine, a, an article that's titled Crows Are Even Smarter Than We Thought. So I'm just going to scroll down to get to some of the text. I'm going to pull up my read and write toolbar by single clicking. And you'll see that when I single click on the extension, the toolbar appears. And so one of the things to, to know about read and write is that we give students multiple ways to get access to text to speech by using hover speech, by using the play, pause and stop buttons, and by giving learners access to the screenshot reader, which is our automatic OCR tool that ensures that all text can be read aloud. And so in a, in a um, web page like this, it might be very difficult, for instance, to have this title at the top, Smithsonian Magazine read aloud, because when I try to click on that to get access to text to speech, it's gonna take me to another page. So that's where the screenshot reader comes in. It can also be very helpful when you have text embedded in an image. Um, so we can automatically OCR that text, sort of lift it out so that learners are able to get text to speech in all of those environments. I also am promised that I would show you a few of the, the supports that are really fantastic for English language learners and learners who may be struggling with literacy. One of the most important pieces, one of the things that I really love is the, um, the dictionary, the picture dictionary. Oops, a second here. My dictionary, my picture dictionary, and my um, translation feature can be opened at the same time. So we had talked a little about supporting that SIOP model, and this is one of the ways that we can help learners get comprehensible input. And so when I click, for instance, on um, the term fountain, you will see that I get information populating in all three of these um, windows. So in the dictionary box, I've got a definition and I've also got a read aloud feature. In the translation box, I've got the translation into the language that I have set in my settings. And then in the picture window or the picture dictionary box, you can see that I've got a visual representation of a fountain. So that learners can see and kind of gather information and, and sort of layer their perception and understanding to gain more um, you know, ownership over their academic language. And you'll notice that when, uh, when I click on another term, all of these um, 
all of the, the information in these boxes is going to continue changing dynamically. So I just switched from fountain to the word birds. And now I've got the images of birds in my picture dictionary window. I have a new definition for birds with a read aloud feature in my dictionary window. And then I, again, also have translation into the, the, the translation that I've set in my settings. This is a really fantastic way to support comprehensible input with English language learners. Also really important to understand um, that pacing is so important for learners who are taking on um, a new language, but also learners who are taking on new learning. So information that they've not yet um, come across. And so adjusting the pacing of information can be done in the read and write settings. I've opened my settings here and I've got a slide bar with speed right in the middle. And I can kind of move this little circle up and down this slide bar to make my reading a little bit faster or a little bit slower. So the reading rate experience is highly customizable. And again, it is um, consistent from one environment to another. So we saw what the read and write toolbar looks like in this web page. Now I'm going to switch over to my Schoology account. And if I actually go in and open up a um, a discussion in Schoology. So I have a discussion question up in my Schoology account that says discuss some examples of direct and indirect characterization from the story. So if I'm a student who needs access to dictation or access to a check it feature so that I know that my um, uh, that my answer is properly spelled and punctuated, or if I need access to word prediction, I can actually use all of those in any rich text environment online. Whether I'm working in Google Classroom, Schoology, Canvas, D2L, or any of your other learning management systems, any place where learners have access to a rich text environment like this, they'll be able to use the tools of read and write that actually help learners express what they know. And lastly, when learners are in a document or in slides, they've actually got access to all of the tools that they are accustomed to seeing in the read and write toolbar but they also get access to the, um, to the voice note feature, which allows them to actually record um, questions, to record explanations um, and submit to teachers that way so that they can kind of um, use their voice for either um, providing verbal response or for explaining their thinking. And teachers can use this in the very same way by dropping voice notes into documents that they intend to share with their learners to help activate background information, to provide additional instructions, or to provide feedback. So if you're interested in trying out Read and Write with your learners, David is going to tell you how to get additional information from Text Help and about Read and Write. Thank you, Joni. That's that's some great information. I love always hearing from you, all the new updates to the product. It's so awesome. I, I tell everybody that I work with and that I meet to check out uh, Text Help. There's a free version for teachers. If you Google read and write free for teachers, it'll point you right to it. They also have a companion app called Equasio for math. It's very similar uh, solutions. But you can request additional information about Read and Write by emailing Joni at j.degner at texthelp.com. That's spelled j.degner at texthelp.com or call her by phone at 812-454-0712. The Patents Project also provides accessible formats, for example, large print, EPUB, audio, and more through the Indiana Center for Accessible Materials, ICAM for students who qualify with a print disability. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this Patents TV video, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and at patentsproject.org. That's P-A-T-I-N-S project.org. Thanks for watching.